In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to take your data from your database and merge them into a template paragraph so that you can get an end result that looks like this. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome to another FileMaker beginner tutorial. My name is Sunny Chu and today we are going to work with merge text. Now, this feature is probably in my opinion, one of the most useful thing that you can learn in FileMaker because the end result and the efficiency boost that it can bring you, it's quite significant. And let me share with you a little bit about um, my story working with this feature. Basically, when I first started out creating um, FileMaker solution for customers, what I find is that I'm spending a lot of time creating invoice and placing it into an email and then sending to the customer. And I spend a lot of time crafting the email, which is uh, taking up a lot of time that I much rather spend developing good solution to, for my customer. So I end up creating a um, email automation tool, which is able to do something like this. So basically, I have draft out a email template and there's some like it's very standard word, for example, like dear customer. So I'm pasting in this uh, blue color thing with the customer name from my database. And thank you for your order. Below is a summary of your purchase. And of course, during that time, I'm doing an invoice. So it's um, probably be like invoice due date will be something like something inside my database and then it's also showing the customer how they can pay me either via a PayPal link or maybe a bank transfer with the information on the bottom. So that little automation that I did end up saving me a lot of time and up to this day, I'm still using this feature regularly. And without it, I'm probably spending a ton of time on email every single day. So I wanna show you how to merge the text within um, your database, take the field data and merge them into a piece of template text. And through the process, we are going to learn a bit about the basics of text calculation. And I'm going to show you a special technique. It's not super special, but it's a personal technique that I found that you can use to make this whole merging process much faster. So let's get started. So let's have a quick look at the database that we are going to be working on. So basically in here is a one table database with a first name, last name, date of purchase, email, product, and pricing. And on this side here, I have a template text already written out. So basically you already know what this is. And um, the blue color item is the thing that I want to switch up with the customer's um, information or the product information, etc., etc. And let's get started by creating a script. So first thing I want to show you is I want to explain to you a concept of um, something called reference and a string. So basically reference and also string. I want to talk to you about the concept of these two things. So let's create something. Um, let's call that content. I'm going to create a variable that is called content. And then I'm going to shout out a dialog of the item within the content calculation. So. I am going to create a calculation and I want to show you what is a reference. So basically in FileMaker, a reference is something like this. So the exercise is the table name, exercise, colon, colon, first name. This is kind of like a reference. So I'm not trying to say exactly the word exercise and first. I'm trying to reference to whatever few data this field is containing. And in our case, it's um, the field here is a uh, Sergio. So if I click OK now, click OK and click play, you will notice that it's shouting out the name Sergio. So that's a reference. Now, the difference between a reference and a string is that, for example, if I want to just say out flat out the word exercise colon colon first as my text, all I need to do is to make it a string, which um, I need to add in a quotation mark on the left and the right side of this text. So if I click OK now, OK, and it's pretty much the, nearly the same thing except with a two quotation. But this time when I click play, it's not going to shout out Sergio, but it's going to shout out an exercise, um, column, column, first name text. So basically in here, 
this is what we call a string, which is kind of like a kind of geeky programmer work to um, reference to a text and um, not trying to be referencing something. So let's get back to the script. I want to show you the next part, how to merge different um, text, maybe the reference, maybe the string together. And what we want to do is to merge first name and last name together. So I want to speak out both first name and last name in one single calculation. So let's go back into our script workspace and I'm going to work with the content in here. So in order to shout out two texts together in one single calculation, we cannot just write a spacebar here and then do like exercise last name. That wouldn't work. It's going to give me an error. So what I need to do is I need to indicate to the computer that I have two texts in here, which I need to add in a and sign like this or you can press in here that can also get this to work. So that indicates to the computer that there's two pieces of text here, first and last. Click OK, click OK again. Let's try this and see what happens. So Sergio Murray, and there's something not quite right in here. There's no space bar in between them. Now, this is one of the very important thing that you need to know about pretty much um, not only file maker string, but pretty much any sort of um, programming language is that you need to type in your own spacebar and also enter key. It's uh, not it's not being assumed by the computer. So what you need to do here is that between the first name and the last name, I want an additional string of text um, between them. So I need to add in a string of text that is to quote, which is a flat piece of text with a space bar in between. So I want the flat space bar in between the two of them. And then I need an and sign here. So overall, we have three pieces of text here. This being the first text, which is a reference. And then the second text here, which is a flat string of a space bar. And then in here, we have a last name um, of a reference. If I click OK now, Click OK again, save this and play the script. We're going to have Sergio Murray in here. And everything is working pretty well. So I think now that we get the basics down of how to work with calculation text, let's move on to working on this example here. Now, the difficult thing about um, this is kind of like a personal tip is that if you are attempting to create a template text that you want to paste in data, I would highly recommend you to write it down in some other software first and not trying to like compose the email within the FileMaker calculation workspace because um, composing the email and putting it into a programming grammar is two different things and if you're doing both at the same time, you're going to have a lot of confusion. So usually what I do is I write out exactly what I want the end result to look like. So it's um, at least I got the design aspect down very quickly. And then I try to convert this into a grammar that is readable by FileMaker calculation. So that's usually the thought process behind this. So let's do this one step at a time. And um, let's um, see if I can get a little bit more space in here. So I want to work with this calculation. So now I need to start by dissecting the little blocks of text that I have in here. As you can see in the previous example, I have three blocks of text. But obviously in this template text example, there's much more text, which means there's also much more blocks involved. So what I want to do is I want to dissect this. And I think the first block of text, it's dear and a space bar in here. That's the first block of text. And this is a string. So I'm going to type dear and a space bar. And the second block is a reference to the customer's um, first name. So I'm going to type in N. And I'm going to double click onto this to get exercise first name, which is a reference to the customer. Now, don't forget the comma in here. So that means it's a third block of text, which is comma. That's the first line. And let's quickly try that and see if that works. So if I click play now, dear Sergio, 
So it's working so far um, pretty well. What I want to move on to next is the second line. And this is where things get a little bit tricky and less intuitive. Now, what I want to do is probably to create um, another block of text. Thank you for the order. And I want to add an N in here. So we have four blocks of text. Dear, exercise first name, comma, and then also thank you for the order. If I play this right now, it's not going to work as we want it to because um, there's no um, enter key in here. So we need two enter key in between comma and thank you for the order. Now what I can do in here is that in order to get an enter key into the system, um, I need to write an enter key within the text string itself. So within the two quotation mark. So we can actually do something like this. Um, I'm pressing option seven on the Mac keyboard, a two carriage return sign that you can press in here as well to get it out. So by creating a, a carriage return in here, it indicates to the computer that you want an enter key. And it's super important again that um, if you want an enter key, you need to indicate to the computer. That goes for pretty much anything that you work with uh, text and programming. So click OK, click OK again and press play. Now we can see everything is working pretty well. Dear Sergio, a um, little bit of space. Thank you for the order. I'm laughing out a um, full stop in here. And let me just uh, make a little bit more change. So as you can see in here, um, that's basically the concept behind working on merging text. It's to really know which one is a string and then which one is a reference and then merging them together in the right type of format. Now, of course, in this example, we actually have a little bit of a redundant of a grammar in here. We don't actually need to add an N in here and have two blocks of text in here. What we can actually do is to merge them together as one. So comma, two and the key, thank you for the order. That kind of simplifies the calculation and it's actually having the same result. Click OK. You can see the same thing because actually from comma to enter key, thank you for the order, it's actually still one piece of text that is, a, I mean one block of text that um, you can put together. But it's a really personal preference of how you want to organize it and I'll get into a that a little bit more later. So as you can see, um, this is the basic concept of how you merge together a paragraph. And that's just the basic. And what I want to show you, it's a method that I found out after quite a bit of time, almost I think a year or two after I, I start creating Pharmaca Solution for People. And this method is absolutely make this whole process much easier. Now, as you can see in here, right now this whole process is pretty confusing. We have a lot of quotation mark, a lot of N key, first name as a reference, and then courage return. And we are only working on this two line and it already looks like this. Imagine if we have to do all of these together. Now, of course, you can still grind through it and do everything one step at a time. But what I would suggest to you is a much easier method. But first, I want to introduce you to another function that is called substitute. Okay, so this is the substitute function. It has three parameters that you need to add in. Now, the first parameter is um, the original piece of text. So for example, let's say my original piece of text is a string of one, two, three, like this. And the second parameter is the text that I want to search to replace it. So for example, I want to target the two here. So I want to search the two. And I want to replace it with, let's say, um, four. So instead of one, two, three, it should now say one, four, three. And basically, this whole thing means this is the original text. I want to find the word two and replace it with the word four. So click OK, click OK, and when I click play, you will notice that it's now originally was one, two, three, now it's one, four, three. That's the concept behind substitute. Now, 
To leverage this really good function, what we can do in our specific case is that instead of having like um, having to do all those like merging and text blocking and trying to figure out the right syntax to get everything right, what I can do in here is to add in uh, a special mark. We want to create our own special mark. Usually what I do is I add a curly bracket here, maybe like something like customer underscore first. So this can be whatever you want, but usually my suggestion is to add a curly bracket and then add in whatever um, special code in here. And what I want to do in here is I want to switch out this customer first um, special code using the substitute and switch it out with the customer information within the field in here. So let me show you exactly how to do it. So first thing first, I want to copy this whole text copy and paste it into the substitute as the original text, like here. Now, this is probably not the cleanest way to do it. It's super confusing. So um, instead, what I want to do is cancel first and I want to create a new variable in the script. Let's call it the original, original, like this. And I want to add in two quotes in here, indicating I'm trying to paste in the whole piece of text and then paste the whole text in here. So dear customer, first name, etc., etc. Click OK, click OK. Make sure it's on the start of the script, the first step. And then what I want to do is that I want to paste in that original text I have into the first parameter of substitute so that my script doesn't look so um, cluttered. Now, what I want to do is I want to find customer first name, this special code here, and switch it out with actual field value. So curly quote, um, customer underscore first, and I want to switch it out with a reference to the customer first name in the uh, exercise file. Click OK. Click OK again, and let's see this time if everything works. So click Enter. And you can see I now have a text that's called Dear Sergio. Thank you for the order. Below is a summary of your purchase, etc. etc. So um, of course the carriage return thing is not working as we needed to, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that a little bit later. But basically you can see that using this method, it's much easier for us to convert our data into this text instead of having to do like 10, like like I think like eight, nine blocks of text to get the result we want. We can just use one single block of text, paste it in with special code and replace the special code with field content. And I think that development process is much easier. And also in the future, if you want to make change to this template, it's much easier than working with like the quotes and the courage return and the, and the end sign and all that. So I think overall, this is the better way to go. And I have to find this out after a year of developing, which is um, kind of a shame because I wasted a lot of time on these type of emails. And so the next thing what I want to do is um, we want to not only switch in the customer first name, but everything else in here as well. So I'm gonna give everything else a special code. For example, like product here and price here and also date in here. And I'm gonna copy this whole thing again, paste it into the original, code quote, paste into original. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you a little variation of this um, substitute function on how you can substitute multiple item at the same time. So. In order to do that, we need to add in this um, kind of rectangle bracket, like square bracket. I don't know how to call this, but you know what this is. So it's a little bit difficult to explain what I'm doing here, but once I start making the other things, it will be more apparent to you what is happening. So basically there's a variation of writing this substitute script is that we can use a bracket here. That means that's the first text I want to find and replace it with. That's the second text I want to find and replace it. Third text and fourth, etc., etc. So in here, what I can do is I can do like product and then I can switch it with the product field. In here, I can change it to um, date and switch it out with the date field. 
And finally, in here, I can switch it out with the price and switch it out with the price view. So basically, the structure of this function is that this is the original text and the full second parameter is actually a special kind of, um, we write it in a special way. And we have uh, the first text we want to search with uh, the square rectangle bracket here and a semicolon indicate we that's the next one, indicate that's the next one, etc., etc. until the last one, we no longer need to add a semicolon on after the last one. So that's the structure of creating a multiple substitute function. Click OK, click OK, and save this, and let's try running this. If I run this now, although the courage return has not been fixed, you can see in here like, Dear Sergio, thank you for the order, and we have the product iPhone X being pasted in here, the pricing 1055 pasted in here, the date also pasted in here. So it's a much easier method that I find that you can use to compose a merge text email or PDF or document. So let's um, fine tune this a little bit more and let's go to the last step, which is um, we want to add in those current return. So what you can do is um, a few things. So you can go, for example, I think the easiest method to understand is you can go to the last line of each, um, well, you can actually go to the first line of, uh, I mean, let's go to the last line. Last line of each line, add in a uh, courage return, option number seven on Mac keyboard, or you can type it in here. Add in one courage return for every, after every line, like this. That's probably the easiest way. Click OK. Whoops. My last um, courage return is outside of the quotation area. So this two quotation area. So I need to make sure it's inside. Click OK. Click OK again. Try this. This time, everything looks perfect. And one last step that we want to do is to probably make it into an email. And I want to show you this really quickly. There is a script called send mail that I can use. And I'm going to send via my email client. And I'm going to send it to um, using a calculation. Send it to the email field, which contains the customer's email in here. And then I'm going to send the subject line as a purchase, I don't know, purchase receipt or something. And then lastly, in here, I'm going to paste in the whole content that I had previously calculated on this second line of the script. Click OK. Let's try this. Press play. And you will notice I have a really nice automated email with template information written on it. And also paste in with the customer's uh, special information. So that is basically it for this tutorial. If you want to download this example file, you can go down the link in the description down below. And I feel like this is probably one of the easiest thing that you can learn in FileMaker that it's gonna give you one of the best results you're ever gonna have in terms of automation. That's it for this tutorial, and I guess I'll see you on the next one.